I'm going to use this uh, sending unit out of my YJ tank and uh, put it in that fuel cell. So I'm just going to pull this out with my whole sending unit and fuel pump and everything. All right, this is the cell uh, I've already taken out. The stock sending unit that comes with this cell. This is just a cheap uh, China-made eBay one. <laughs> um, and then the uh, the filler neck part right there. I pulled it out, and I'm going to try to put my sending unit. I'm going to cut a hole in the top of this tank and try to mount my sending unit in here. That way, I'll have a fuel pump and everything inside. I don't want to run it external. So uh, I'm trying to figure this out. I think I'm going to use my. Uh, my uh, sending unit for the uh, fuel gauge, uh, the stock one in this TJ module. Um, and then I'm just going to kind of bypass the one that came with this tank, you know. They both, they both come out this way in the tank, so I don't know. I'll either have to re-bend this one if I use it to go around my fuel pump and stuff. That's about the only way I can do it. I can't turn this one because the, the holes are not... Um, you know they're drilled they're, it's not a perfectly circular pattern but uh so i'm just gonna i'm just gonna kind of wing it that's what i'm gonna do i'm gonna cut a hole in there and uh try to mount my module in there all right that was definitely not a pretty operation but i got it done i think i'm gonna paint this tank black anyway it's it's a little too blingy for my style so I'll, uh, I'll clean this up and uh, put some black paint on it or something. All right, I need a backer for my fuel pump module. And uh, this tank kind of has a, a small leak in it anyways. This is a factory YJ tank. I think I'm just going to cut this out because uh, it has uh, these little nut certs in there. I'm just going to cut this out and use it as a backer ring, I think. I'm not sure if I can get it in the tank, but that's what I'm going to try to do. My sending unit is going to be way, <clears throat> way too short. So I think what I'm going to do is cut it, cut it in half and lengthen it. It's really only held together by the return line uh, right here. The pump and everything is attached to the return line. So I think I'm going to cut it and put a compression fitting in there and then just lengthen it to, uh, you know, to the bottom of the tank basically and put it put it back to splice it back together all right here's what my sending unit looks like i just used two compression fittings and another piece of 3 8 line and just extended it uh till it'll go all the way to the bottom of the tank just got to connect up my wires make a new piece of hose and i'm gonna drop that baby in there all right also had to uh, modify this the arm on this uh sending unit uh, I just kind of rebent it, you know, to where it'll. It's going to be a little bit off whenever it's full, but that's that's just kind of how it's going to have to work with this. I, I tried to set it up to where I get full empty, and then I might just have a little bit extra on the on the full side, but uh, didn't have enough room to to go out because it hits the tank. You know, I I can't go too far with it because I don't have any I don't have any extra room on the end of the tank there. So I'm gonna try to drop this in there and see how it looks. Alright, on the sending unit, it had these little barbs for, you know, a uh, rubber hose. So I, I chopped those off and uh, I got some of these compression fittings to 6AN. I think that's what I'm going to try to use. So I'm going to try to put these on here. Compression fittings. Convert it to dash 6. Then I'll use a Teflon line all the way up to the motor. The return side on this is 5 16 but you can see that it's next down, or you know, it was 3 8 up here, and then it next down to 5 16 But I can't get my fitting on there far enough uh, to make the the ferrule, you know, attach and still be able to get this line all the way in there. So I think I'm actually gonna have to turn this fitting down, take some off of here. It's kind of ridiculous, but that's what I'm gonna do. I got this old hunk of junk lay that's, I think it's from like 1910 or something like that. It's an old son of a gun. I'm going to turn it down with this.
Well, it's pretty crude, but it's kind of fun. Fix that thing right up. It almost didn't work out for me. I just barely got that that ferrule in there. You can't see it, but anyways, the tube is just barely past the ferrule. You can see it. Well, damn the luck. I'm gonna have to do the same thing on the speed side because the bend is so close to that. It doesn't allow me enough room to to get it on there far enough. So I'm gonna cut it down too. The other one worked out okay. It's kind of a crappy setup I'm doing here, but I think it's going to work. I got them both on there. We'll find out if it leaks when I get this all in there and set up and, uh, you know, get some pressure going through there. In case you were wondering how I was going to hold all of this, this uh, backing plate that I put in here, in here, this is what I'm going to do. Because I was also wondering the same thing so i'm going to try to screw these into my plate that works out and then drop my sanding unit and um, my seal and plate and everything through there all right i think i've got this going my way Now I can put my regular bolts in there and uh, I was kind of worried about if I had a fuel pump failure in the future you know how I would take this apart and not have that nut plate drop into a huge tank of gas you know in the middle of the trail or whatever but uh, I think I'll just keep these in the center console of my Jeep and it'll make it easy I'll just be able to screw those in hold the nut plate up while I put the rest of these bolts in then I can just unscrew those put a regular bolt in I did end up having to get uh, longer bolts for this, I guess just because of the added height of the the aluminum, but uh, it was only less than eighth inch. It's about 100 thousandths or so, 95 thousandths thick, and uh, those bolts would just barely catch. I could only get like a, a thread or two, and a couple of them pulled, so I swear I've been to the dang hardware store five or six times now just getting this stupid sending unit in this tank <laughs> but we're getting there I think it's gonna work out you can see my nut plate down there for the fill hole I think I'm gonna do the same thing same idea on that I just got two longer bolts the same thread size and I'm just gonna cut the heads off and use those to, to for, for me to hold that nut plate up so I can put the fill neck on it's kind of a pain in the ass, but I don't know how they put that thing together. I guess they they put all the bolts in and then welded it together. <laughs> you know what I mean? Or maybe they used some kind of same process I'm doing. Maybe. I don't know. Who knows? All right. We've got a vent line on this side. It's got a check valve in it. It's for a rollover valve. So I'm going to put my vent in that line. And then these other, these other ones, I'm just gonna cap. This is the what would be the feed line if I had an external pump, and then this other one is just a return. So I'm just gonna cap those two. That should be good. And then I have for the rest of it, I've got these for the throttle body. Uh, these are gonna screw into the back of my my Chevy throttle body motor and uh, to convert those to dash six hose so and then I'll just uh, probably put some 45s or something 
you know, off of those, and then I'll have this stainless hose all the way from the return side. It'll be basically from here straight to the tank, uh, one of those, and then on the pressure side, it'll I'll have a break in between. And I got a one of these. This is a cheapo filter from eBay. It's supposed to be a 30 micron, uh, and it has dash six ends on it. This actually came with dash six eight and ten fittings so you can interchange them whatever you need basically it's just o-ring fittings uh, one thing about this thing is it does not say which way is in or out so I'm probably gonna have to take it apart I guess and see if it matters I don't know we'll see it was only like 19 bucks so it's pretty cheap hopefully it does not leak <laughs> we'll find out so I think this is where I'm going to put the cell. Uh, that way I still have some room in the back. I was going to put it up against the back seats, but I, I don't want to have to fill it way up there. You know, this keeps the, the fill neck right here in the back. So this is a tall tank, but it's, it's also skinny, so it doesn't take up much room. And, uh, that was sort of why I chose that. It's a 17 gallon cell. So it should be plenty. I could could still put a one bucket seat back here if I wanted, but I think I'm just gonna take the seat out. That way I still have room to put gear and stuff. That's what I'm gonna do. Mix some mounts and plumb that thing up. <laughs> 